and welcome to another gameplay review on the Vakayu Gameplay Channel. And in this one, we once more have Fiddlesticks, the S tier jungler that nobody plays. And in this video, we have a new, very good build. Not really new, but it's so fresh that there's no data on it, even in the entire patch. And of course, the player that's using it is a Master Chief player, so I'm going to show you why he's so strong, as we have some shenanigans in the top side here, obviously with the Nautilus, you can expect such things. And of course, we are against an Evelyn as well, so a little bit of farming jungler on farming jungler crime but at the same time we can look to see how we play from behind now fiddle six why don't people like to play him unique we clearly have to practice just a little bit but i mean honestly people are going to play karthus and spam 100 clears to get that optimized fiddle six is a lot easier and you can use them to get to whatever elo you want really it's just an s plus jungle that no one plays so let's see how we can actually navigate the meta now a lot of people don't like this power thing that's required for him which is you know the kind of path thing for avoidance, right? You don't want to walk into an enemy jungler too soon. You want to make sure that you're not resetting the camps with your first clear, which is really, really bad. And, um, you know, that just... People just don't want to deal with it. But at the same time, the damage, the team fighting, the objective control, the fact that with Predator you can be wherever you want. However, you are predictable. So, a little bit of a nice early clear invade from the Darius. And we're going to make sure we, you know... Smite it, heal it, get the full proc, get the extra heal, which is really, really good. There is enough force supplies, so the bleed damage does kill us, but our top laner should be able to do something about it. But that is the downside to Fiddlesticks, and why? In this particular case, the level 1, I mean, I'm introducing the video, I'm not always talking about the level 1, you would have seen the runes, standard runes. You've got to put that control ward down. The protection is huge. Now, typically, you would even put the control ward on this side against your kindreds, against your invading enemy junglers, right? However, in this case, we didn't use it at all. And, you know, given the fact that they were invading level 1 as we watch the bot lane here, um, you know, you could say because of that we should put it here, but that's a bit of results based. Normally you'd be placing it on the bottom side and then clearing on the top side. So, we see here, out of base, with Predator activated, with the boots available, and the fact that we got level 2 from the Sucky Suck uh, and Smite combo, you could look forward, but... Again, not really what you want to be doing. The control would here I would be placing, just in case there was some kind of vision on me for the blue side, but at the same time, we're not really sure about that. The enemy jungler is Evelyn, she's just gonna do her business. I don't think she's necessarily gonna look for an invade here, so that's a saving grace of this matchup, but it does happen. I had this the other day as well, even as, um, I can't even remember who the hell it was, just a normal jungler that's not really turbo meta, just getting invaded by a laner. You have to be able to navigate that and deal with it. And of course, bot lane dies, mid lane dies, this dude got first blood, Evelyn's pathing to the top side. This is going to be a bit of a rough game. So how do we navigate that and still thrive as the sticks? Let's see. Right. Blue side out of base, obviously, because no point going here. Because if Evelyn's going to cut through and anticipate you being here, obviously, that's the way. But of course, we were looking bot lane as a potential gank. In the meantime, we set up a bottom to top sequencing by doing romp, blue, and then wolves. And we can snack this. Oh, hello. <laughs> and that's why I tell you guys in low elo, and that's why I tell you guys in all your other elos that you play fundamentals, the fundies. Make sure you have them down. I mean, this is just lazy part, I think, to try and get a double scuttle on the fiddlesticks. Obviously, he's going to collapse here onto the bottom lane where he has that numbers advantage. Focus the target together as a threesome, and they can menage a trois the Nautilus to death. And that's the thing, right? You have someone collapsing on you down here. Don't go up and then complain your team doesn't rotate. Because the two people on the enemy team will just collapse and they go 3v1. If someone is rotating and not in the fight, but you can't have numbers advantage here, choose your targets wisely, slap them around a bit, and now the fight is over before the jungler even rotates. But again, the Evelyn, I don't know. I mean, this ward obviously is the issue, but if she's tracking the ward, she would know. And you can just walk on behind like this and get there without being seen. So, bit of lazy pathing by the Evelyn. And of course, that ends up costing her just a bit. But the Fiddle Sticks, nice swap to the blue side. Nice idea to take the crab and then collapse on down for the numbers advantage. And now we're back in the game. Baboos is not back in the game. And Darius is enjoying himself a feast. In the meantime, we can do red into raptors here. Anticipate that the Evelyn's going to reset and then do this. Or she could stay out and do another sequence, right? That's always the possibility. And you don't know exactly what she's going to do. You, as the viewer, can tell that she's going to stay on the... on uh, Stay on the map for now because she hasn't reset her items. But ah, now, you, now you do know this. Now that you know, full clear, top crab, bottom, Krugs again, into the 
You know what? I don't know even why he died with flash up, but it is what it is. And now we know she did Krugs and Raptors again, so we know she's going either reset or going to do another sequence again on the blue quadrant. So we could look to sneak a dragon. We could look to do something else, but bottom line has prior and cuts us off. This is for the game. This is the type of game, excuse me, that you really need to know how to execute. Because as a fiddle or scaling jungler, insert any scaling jungler, you have to take advantage of the enemy jungler's positioning, tracking, and mistakes, as well as the fact that sometimes your lanes are losing. Now, I don't like all this waffling. I don't like this because we're not going to do this. Very clearly, we're not going to do this. We know that the bot lane is moving in the river. We know that everyone's just going to do this and reset and probably rotate over by the time we've you, you know, even gotten close to taking this. Just go to your jungle, get five, quickly do the Grump, do the Wolves. You will probably have to give up this dragon unless something happens that you can capitalize. And that's just the reality of the situation. Like... Me not even seeing this because I'm talking to you guys. Look at this. See, if you're farming the Grumpier, you have to see this, right? Don't look into the camera. <laughs> look on your map, see this, click around, see what's going on. I don't know why she's thinking she can fight a Scion. Evelyn is not in the best state in terms of, you know, the PvP 1v1. So that is definitely a mistake on her part. And because of this, because of this mistake, as I said just now, we can now go on, get that RNG Crab. Blessed RNG crab, because it's the first one with all that experience. And then, yes, you can look to do the dragon. And then, yes, if someone rotates, you make the kill. So, let's speed this up. We're going to snack this away a little bit. We do have a smite charge we want to use for the dragon. We have a bit of bot prio now. Let's pull this out just a little bit, just for safety. But I think, overall, you know, Evelyn's going to reset come bottom side. And you know she's not six, which is crucial. If she did kill him or picked up a kill here and pushed the wave and got six, press tab and you're going to need to respect that. And of course, you also have the uh, the smite plus the peaches over here for your replenishment in HP and mana. Uh, top up, I guess. Now, we know Evelyn is going to reset and come to the bottom side. You know, Is she going to do some camps and then lane gank? Is she perhaps going to do the red and then come to the bottom line? How close is she to six from her experience leeching? We don't fully know yet, okay? That's the most important thing. You don't fully know yet. Obviously, in this case, we see that fact that she's sick. She's going in on the bottom lane. We use the control to hippity hoppity over the wall. She gets stunned. We can go in here nice flee, nice silence, and she will die from this because it's not enough. Uh, she probably should not have wasted her ultimate. And now we can chase down. Can we hit any more spells? Yes. Suck. Suck. There we go. Lord of the Sucky Suck comes through. Very, very nice. And obviously, Evelyn here. What is the fiddle going to do? You know, what is the fiddle actively going to do when you die topside? He's going to look to secure the bottom crab, secure the dragon. He will be in the area. It's unlikely he's going to be resetting. So that gank's a little bit overzealous in terms of a timing. She could have been a bit more patient, done the, the red buff or done something else, and basically said, give, you know, I'm going to give the fiddle time to reset, and then I'll gank the bottom lane. And obviously this ward here gives a lot of information anyway. So, right. Blasting wand is done. Amtome is complete. Dark Seal is in our pocket, and we do have one smite charge available that's not the fastest you know smite usage but at the same time we were severely compromised from the darius making sure we get absolutely fisted on that first uh, red buff so krugs are gone obviously snacked by our own top laner red buff isn't up yet we do have this and we want to be sequencing either for a six bottom line or up towards the herald so to the bottom line full quadrant available we have a smite charge we can use double stack these camps if nothing, you can move on up to the Wolves and into the um, Raptors. And while I'm saying that again, Evelyn shows up with her camouflage and gets a kill on the Yasuo, which is exactly what's going to happen. You cannot do anything about that. You could do the Wolves or we could just hold the mid lane. Mm. He chooses not to, but hmm, it's good to hold the mid lane in this particular case. You know, he's dragging the camps to get there. If Ari is staying to hit these tower plates, I definitely advise you to do that because that means she's getting plates. We're denying the CS as well. It's a huge gold swing for your mid laner matchup, but because she detaches and leaves, it's less of an issue. It's just, you know, wasting experience to the map, but you're maintaining good sequencing. Now, Evelyn, of course, is the big question mark. So we need to start putting control wards, tracking her movements, getting deep vision as possible, but we do know at this point she's sequencing up. This plant moves and hits this, which means we do know that she is in fact there because mid, mid, and two bots. So we know Evelyn's here. Let's move up for a counter gang, shall we? I like this play. If they give you visual cue, if they give you a visual confirmation and you know that they're headed this direction, set yourself up for a counter gank. I love it. And if they don't show up, you just kill top laner. So it works out pretty nicely in that regard. Right, Yasuo kills the Ari and now is fighting the Evelyn who shows mid lane, which means we know she's not coming up here so we can full on engage with no remorse and righteously destroy Darius for his red buff invade. Now she's gonna push this obviously to get some more experience. She could look to hit the plates 
And he's basically going to sneak through this little gap here. Again, no one will see this and try and snack away a Herald. Now, nine times out of ten, that is what you want to do. But it is obviously risky because what... What's Evelyn going to want to do here? She's most likely going to want to <laughs> look to also secure this, anticipating that the Fiddlesticks might show up. But at the same time, we do have our top laner here. There is no Darius on the map here. There is no Ari on the map. So what can the Evelyn really do 1v1 here if the sign shows up? Nothing, which means she goes to the bottom lane. But I do 100% understand Fiddlesticks pinging help because if she did rotate up and, and sign wasn't there, and you do lose 1v1 for whatever reason, that's the issue. So good ping, good awareness, and obviously Evelyn recognizes she can actually do nothing about it. And so goes to the bottom line and does what Evelyn does. But we are still 4-1-0. It's subtle, isn't it? It's subtle, but it's good. Good prior thing, putting yourself in the right position means you can always make the right play or some sort of good play for yourself and for your team. So we shall channel and snag ourselves a red buff again. Evelyn's a question mark, and I'm not swapping vision because, ah, there we go, see, see, see? Now, I have to show you this again, I'm sorry to do this, but look at this. See, this prior thing is why I tell you guys to stick real close to the wall here. Very, very close to the wall, and then cut down, because if there's a ward in the bush, you won't be seen, but the Darius, bless his soul, is not a jungler. So he doesn't stick to the good prior thing, and he cuts way too soon, so we see this. Big, very, very big, you know? And um, Yasuo still <laughs> Wait. Yeah. 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 So he still dies to this. Uh, we kind of know if Darius is doing that kind of aggressive move from the top lane moving down. Evelyn must be in the area. She was bottom lane last. It is what it is. We do have the Herald here. And because we see that play, two and a half plates on the top side, let's go ahead and elevate the game state. Because versus Evelyn, when she's running around like this and doing quite a solid job of just punishing lanes for the laziness and bad positioning, especially in this elo. Um, you know, elevating the game state can start to move the pieces around enough that you have good vision, you, you start to push the map a bit, uh, you're counter jungling, and you're forcing it to be in more known locations. So good knock up there by the sign. We're going to ult over the wall and just kill him again. Beautiful. Excellent swap by the fiddle. You know, he punishes us here, and then we give him a hell life of torment and disappointment by spamming his lane here and taking his tower. So he's screwed. Evelyn is basically doing this, and they'll get a you know, response tower here maybe, or at least some plates. And she could look to take these camps. We'll take the RNG scuttle, no problem. There is a dragon up. We're going to have to lose it. So if there's camps here, definitely look to steal it. All right, that's how you keep yourself within touching distance of the victory. We are down not so many golds. Only about 400, which is perfect. It's exactly what you want. And at the beginning, you would not have said that. However, let's look at the gold amounts. Here we go. 5, 9, 1,000 gold lead in the top lane. We're 700 gold ahead of the Evan because of our tower plate goodness and the fact that we're 5, 1, 0. And mid lane is down... ADC is way down, and support is about equal, but down 100. So because of our play, because of the good fiddlesticks play we did, top lane is now has a huge lead, we have a good lead, and you have that one laner that you need with you to help carry the game, but at the same time, you've maintained a lead yourself over the enemy jungler, and that's always the most important. If you're a low econ jungler, it's okay to be behind if you're making the right plays, but if you want to be a carry jungler, okay, you really do have to make sure you keep the lead even in the most negative of game states. Here we go, reactive pathing, predator activation. Can we do it? We get the fling, we get the... Oh, well, we didn't actually suck. We hit the fear, we hit the E. Nice job. And then we suck to sustain. Take the cannon wave. Thank you very much. Nice. And what was that? Thank you. Very... <laughs> that was like three words, and I don't even know which three words in the English language it was. Thank you very much. That was nice. There we go. That's what I was trying to say. So good reactive pathing. Kills the jungler again. And remember the zero death rule. I've been really throwing forth... Uh, throwing forth in my videos lately from the main channel. Unless you really have to die, it's better to make the right play for yourself where you can live. Because if you can live, even if it's a bad play for your team, usually you can steal a Baron, you can farm a bit, you can counter jungle, you can get vision control. There's a lot of benefit to not dying, even if uh, you think, hey, I need to save my team. Don't force it. Obviously, in this case, we have Hextech. We're just going to straight up ult this and assassinate this Nautilus, I think, if he can. And he can indeed do exactly that to keep on our flow of brilliant English. <laughs> right, I do like the Hextech map actually because, you know, I've, there was a period of time where I didn't really see it, and now I'm seeing it a bit more lately, probably just, uh, you know, confirmation on observer bias, but at the same time, people are not using the Hextech gates to move around the map and get surprise plays and get out of base quicker. Use these suckers. I know I've said this on the gameplay channel recently, but use them. Get to play sooner, react sooner, make, you know, a pick in their jungle and get out. It's really their... For you to use and those who hate the map and complain about it are probably ones that just don't use it and get beaten by it 
I mean, sucks for you, I guess, but that's your fault. Yasuo dies again to the F1 and Ari Charm combo, which, to be fair, that's tough to avoid. Very, very tough to avoid because, you know, double charm. <laughs> we take this here. We could look to steal this, I think, because Adarius, you know, is top lane and we don't really care about him. But the Evan's a question mark. If you see a regular jungler go down this way and you see everyone go down this way and you know the top lane is dead or also moving, you're like, here we go, you see? Then you can snack this and get out. But at the same time with Evelyn, best play it safe. Reset here. We're very close to 11. We'll have it after these wolves. So if we're looking for a gank here from the Evelyn's perspective, then we can counter gank it with a level 2 rank ultimate, which is huge. And here we go, there's a champ from Evelyn, she's showing up. We have Ari over the wall, ultimate from the Evelyn doesn't kill anyone. We do get stuck here, we get the fear, we get the silence. She will escape, but Nautilus, you are by yourself. Karma, can we have some stonks? Thank you so much, love it, beautiful, appreciate it. And now we take a grump, see? All of this avoidance means that when it's time to go fighting and deal with the, the enemy jungler and the enemy laners that are fed, you don't really care because you can handle business, and that's really all it is. Now, we are still down 700 gold, but it's all because of us that we're still in this game. I mean, Yasu's 171. Almost a power spike time. Three more deaths. Three more deaths. Let's see. And I know with Evelyn, I'm not clicking around the map as much because I'm talking about, you know, hypotheticals about the, the, the strategy of the game and what we're looking for. You guys should be paying attention to the minimap. And when you're in game versus Evelyn, please, yes, use your F keys all the time. Click on the map. I made that video on the main channel as well, talking about these exercises you can do to kind of make that more a part of your game, but we're focusing on the jungle in these videos so we don't always click around nearly as much, like here, you see? She just shows up very quickly and kills. And because it's Evelyn, it's good practice, actually. You're not gonna see her on all the normal visual cues. So when she goes for a kill here, you gotta see it, you gotta make sure you're tracking the alts as well as the flashes. And um, if you're a split-pushing jungle, at least capable of it, yeah, you can push this and take a tower, but in that particular case, I think we all know that Evelyn's just gonna run her down and try and kill us. And there's not much you can do unless you are something that can match up. So there we go. Thank you very much. He took these and moves across Vision. That's why Vus and Evelyn vs. Camo Champions who want to put control wards, not control wards, Vision wards in camps so that when they do them and get seen, you see them leave the jungle. But again, Yasubi don't care much for this. Okay, wait, is it Fiddlesticks time? Yes, it is. We do have Zanya. Ooh, the Zanyas of the charm was great. <laughs> Excellent. And our Scion train comes through. The E West Scion never misses. And we can chain follow up on that if we want. Or we can just clear vision. The Jinx excite from that ultimate. That was beautifully cinematic. I do enjoy a good Jinx ult. See, everyone will just flank now. So you have to be very, very careful. You see? There we go. You have to track this. You have to put control wards down behind you when you're against an Evelyn. So I'm glad for the stuff clearing wards and actually rotated because most junglers in this situation, and you have to be honest with yourself here. You know, you can type in the comments. Use the comments as a diary. You would have maybe just gone back to farm your walls, right? And maybe your Gromp if it was up. Or you go for your buffs and your raptors. That would be you after this fight, right? No. You get numbers advantage. There's a dragon up. You push the map. You make sure you stick with your team. You shadow. You use your FGs for vision control. Make sure everyone doesn't get away with it. And then you fall back to the dragon. That's on you. Your team will make stupid plays and die. But the correct play for you is to play off of that. Predict the enemy jungle what she or they want to do. Counter it and get the objectives. Kill, conversion, ratio, my friends. That's what we want. And that's what we get. So the loot and echo here. This is the build into the Zonias. You can obviously go into the Banshee's Veil second for a lot of CDR. And obviously, in this case, Magic Resist and the Spell Shield versus all the Charms and the CC. Huge. Okay, absolutely huge. And this is a core cool build. Throw in a Void Stuff when necessary or a Death Cap when necessary. And that's what this guy runs. And the penetration... And the passive from Ludens with your ultimate and with your farming, with your E, um, as well as your Saki Saki, whenever you proc it, actually, is absolutely huge. But most importantly, Rocket Bell gives you what? Mobility, which is nice. But it also gives you penetration passive, but so does Ludens. And that's why he likes his play. But at the same time, with the clearing and the damage that you can do, it's huge. We think they're on the um, second Herald here, snacking this baby away, which of course they were. And now while Sion over here is pushing, he's got the Hellbreaker, we can anticipate some dunkings on the top lane, some divings, and obviously Evelyn is going to flank and try to kill the ADC. So she lives. That's huge. Okay, this is not an Evelyn video, but if it was, I would be analyzing the hell out of this and saying, why are you 735 and not solo carrying this game with how fed you got? And that's because the fiddle is playing very, very juicy and well. But yeah, so if they take an objective here and they're looking to take these outer turrets, you just shadow through your jungle nice and safe and make sure you can rotate to whatever plays the enemy tries to make, which of course he did, but don't overcommit, don't die. 181 Yasuo, two more deaths. Come on, 10 death spike, I hope. Now again, Evelyn's around, you have to buy control woods and place them in the lanes behind you. 
I once bought 20 control wards as a Zyra support uh, last season versus an Evelyn who was popping off. A Smurf Evelyn, 20 kills, very clearly a challenger player, and I'm like, you Oh, you guys grew up. That's a mistake. Yeah, yeah see, the, uh, that's a mistake. So we have to use our flash there to go in the Ari, whereas if you had the uh, rocket belt... <laughs> if you had the rocket belt, you wouldn't need to use a flash. So that's why I do think the rocket belt is standard, but he does like the penetration and the raw stats and the passive of the Ludens for the splash damage overall. And you know what? That's the kind of damage and playstyle he enjoys, and he doesn't really need the rocket belt to succeed. But... It's still better, right? Objectively, it's still better, but this is a new build that he's running and having success with. So you know what? Penetration all the way, baby. <sighs> Waiting for the reset on the Jinx ult here. Nice shield from the Karma. A little bit of a Jin ult activation blocked by the big beefcake Scion, and then we disengage. Very, very nice. Yeah, see? Um, anyway, what I was saying, if you have an Evelyn, buy control wards if you're not the jungler. Even if you are the jungler, look, he's buying it. Put them in the lane, you see this? Boof, as you move. You're buying two every back. Whenever you push up on the lane, you're chaining the control wards together so that if she tries to flank, you see it. You're bundled up and she could do nothing. You could literally make Evelyn's life absolutely giga miserable just by positioning correctly and using control wards and obviously um, CC and things like this. So here's the build. And then you're going to see what we're going to do with damage in this particular arena. Obviously, the Manchesterville is huge in this particular team comp. We're going wolves down. Um, if Grump was available, that would make more sense. But at the same time, there's a Baron on the map. So, you know. What are you looking to do in the mid-game? You're looking to be with your team here and be in these team fights. Now, we need to rotate as soon as possible. We do have Predators, so we can't do that. Evelyn shows on the control wood, again, excellently placed. She tries to flank, but she can't because we see her. We can prepare for her. We can disengage from her. Fiddlesticks over the wall is just going to kill the ADC, which is absolutely perfect. Kills the Evelyn because she repositioned, uh, I don't know, in some kind of weird way. We do kill the Darius there. We use our Zonius to avoid any bleed damage. Death do we? Thank you so much, Karma Kamsamida. Beautiful. Beautiful. And you see... Ideally, and then we'll do a Baron from this, you're out of base, pathing towards where your team wants to be. But when there's a Baron on the map, it's risky to go down here. So he does this because he knows he's Fiddle, he knows he has Predator, and he knows he can go over the wall with his ultimate. That's champion knowledge. If you were something that could not rotate to this particular fight, you'd be absolutely screwed. So make sure you're playing within proximity of your team. So against a non evelyn comp, what I would do is, obviously, you took the Baron, they're all dead, take their stuff as well, push the waves. I would look to push this a little bit, right? Especially if I have vision of them and then use that as a position for my flank. Now, with Fiddle, that's obviously a bit more difficult, but with Ludens, actually, a little easier, ironically. So, push the waves a little bit before the objectives, look for those flanks afterwards, but obviously, if you're out of position and they all decide to fight, make sure, please, that you rotate. Come on, what are we gonna go for? Needlessly Large Rod? Yeah! We don't really need the Void. Uh, you know, there's, there's no MR here and, you know, a little bit on the Nautilus. We do so much damage, you don't really need it. Just raw death cap is absolutely fine for this particular game. And we do have these, which will do enough in this particular case. But Void in most cases in the next patches will be even better because of the buffs coming out to everyone. You guys don't want to group up against the Fiddle again, do you? Well, they don't actually need Fiddle anymore. Which is why, as a jungler, when you do your job well, sometimes you're not really needed in these endgame fights. And... <laughs> Yeah, that does suck. You know, I don't always enjoy that feeling as a Herald goes on a suicide mission. But at the same time, when you're 12 one and you've had to fight this deficit the whole game, again, all the match histories to this are linked below. You will see the gold graphs. You can look at uh, the gold amounts per team and so on. You will see that there's a big sort of, you know, there's an inting mid lane. The, the Yasuo is literally 1-8-1. and one, But bless his soul, didn't AFK, fortunately, and didn't actually run it down you know, 16 times. And from this, we do the dragon. And again, you know, like you have a gold lead now and you have a jinx and you've made this happen as fiddle. But I do like here that we don't necessarily go straight up because, <sighs> you know, let me think about this for a second out loud. I like pushing this wave and just kind of collapsing everything and taking all the gold we just gained, resetting, and then trying to do that again with a good fight. Because essentially you're looking at a situation where you took some cams, you killed them all, you uh, went ahead and took the Baron, you took some of their blues, you reset a bit, we win another dragon fight, we take that, we push all the waves, now you spend all that gold, you actually have a 6-7k gold lead. And that's the most important thing here, because if you try and over push to try and take an inhib, yes, it was top lane with Sign for some particular reason, even though he has Hellbreaker, mm, it, you know, the pendulum can swing very easily if someone oversteps and kills, uh, kills, 
They don't kill, they get killed, they die. Uh, so just pushing the waves here is really, really fine. He's gonna finish off his camps here because he wanted to get enough gold to finish death cap. That's the only reason that's okay. If you're not gonna actually do that, make sure you're with your team because your team itself is not gonna have this restraint here. So we're basically using the Hextech gates to go and farm quickly. Um, but at the same time, Evelyn shows up top lane. This is very good. So this is good, right? That FG doing some absolute turbo work. Thank you so much. Um, we're gonna take this and now we want to shadow with our team. The fact that he's a little bit... I, yeah, okay, take this. <laughs> Use the Hextech gates, my friend. Use them. Yeah, I wouldn't always... Actually, you know what? No, no, I'm not I'm not gonna even get into that. I would not whatsoever have taken those camps if my team was ready to fight. Because look at this, you see? Look at the gap between you and your team. In Silver, you know what's happening here. Your whole team dead. Straight up, no one's paying attention to this. If they see you're not there, they're just gonna go straight in. So this is the risk, which is why when you're full build and you're just waiting for a Mejais, um and maybe an Elixir, don't do your camps, don't spend too much time farming at the end there. Um, and obviously Jinx being dead is a big, big problem. Because yeah, she's not doesn't have the best KDA, but she's a reset queen and she can easily win a team fight for you. So now we're gonna have to set up and make sure we win the team fight. We went there, we full build, we need to make their play. All right, sieging on this tower, Evelyn's out of position. Can we do something? No, because we're clearing vision so they, they see us. We obviously don't have a Banshee's Veil up either, but they are nervous. They group up versus the fiddle. And this is the thing, right? The threat of your team fight is more important sometimes than the actual team fight because it compromises everything they do in terms of positioning and your team can usually capitalize from that. So, in he goes, the Scion. The... Yeah, he gets hooked. But he's a beefcake. I love Tank Scion. It's way better. Dorios is splinting, uh, splitting on the top side. We have Evelyn just pushing out the mid lane, taking these control wards, so we use that to take their base. And Yasubi's gonna go do that, so that's fine, right? I mean... I don't know what exactly they're looking to do. Here we go. We see Ari flanking. We do need to be cautious. Two people top lane here. Hellbreaker losing some of its stats. And now we're two, which means they're going to try and go in, on us and go in on us. He misses that hook. Let's re-coalesce as a foursome. Jinx can hold top lane versus Darius. One hopes. And now we are just going to go in and kill the, <laughs> the damage. Just kill them. You know, if they're going to miss position like that, we'll just kill them. And uh, Jinx obviously cannot hold against Darius. We need to look at that. We kind of... Ah, the map things. So he's doing this. We have an inhib. Ari's out of position. We're gonna kill her too. And you could just straight up end the game with the wave. So the rage splitting isn't always what you want. And with Fiddle, as with all, when you have Predator, Fear, Huge Ultimate, punish positions. Make sure you are ensuring that when they do do these kinds of things, you're not going, well, when they are doing these kinds of things, you're not going back to base and handling the split push when you can just use numbers advantage, kill them with your fight and, and end the game. So. There you have it. Fiddlesticks from a deficit with an inting mid laner against another farming jungler after being invaded level 1. Still kills everyone. 16 kills and only dies once from that first blood. That's what we call vengeance, my friends. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and learned something. Uh, hope Hay Fever is being more kind to you than it is to me. <laughs> and um, yeah, like, comment, share, subscribe. See the main channel. Coaching VODs on Patreon as well as coaching signups. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial, which of course will have a lot of Olaf and Tilly and all the buffs coming in the patch tomorrow.